Well, welcome ambassadors. Welcome once again. Uh, we're so excited to have you guys here to be able to impart wisdom, knowledge, and understanding by utilizing scripture. And uh, by utilizing scripture, we always know that we can count on the Father to direct us and direct our path. So it's Elder Demetrius here with my lovely wife, Alicia. And we're so excited to come forth with this word today. So uh, what we will be talking about today? We are going to be talking about the kingdom design of marriage. And I'm really excited to be able to talk about this because there's just so much out here and we have so many different ideas and philosophies of what marriage is. Um, and so many people who want to be married, aren't married, are married even, may be in something and not even understand what they're in or may think that they are um, in a kingdom covenant and are not exemplifying um, what a kingdom covenant actually is. So it's really important for us to look at how the father has designed marriage um, and, and see what he has to say about it yes. and not come up with our own idea. Yes, because one of the most important uh, tactics of the enemy is to get you to do a good thing versus the right thing. And so when we see certain things as far as like marriage, because we see all the time people um, are writing books about marriage. Um, they are having sitcoms about marriages. They have podcasts, all this media that's being pushed out. But if it doesn't come from a pure source, uh, it's tainted and the father can't operate. And he didn't establish something that was tainted in the beginning. So we have to make sure if we call ourselves ambassadors, that even as it pertains to marriage, that we make sure that we do uh, it the way the father designed it to uh, to be. So we're going to definitely be digging deep into that today. So what we want to do is want to start with a statistic um, about divorce. And and when I when I, every time I read this, it really makes me think about how love is not the answer. Most people think just because you love somebody and you're in a marriage that it's going to work. But no, it's a lot of people today that have been divorced and still love each other. Mm -hmm. and 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 it's not a reflection of the father because the father if he designed it he gives you the manual to make sure it works so we're going to figure out uh the key to that yeah and it's funny you say manual because you know think about like all of the things that we um do in life like getting your driver's license mm -hmm. or you know just certain things that you prepare for mm -hmm. but marriage People don't really, in my opinion, yes. prepare enough for it. Like you may have some who may do a little premarital counseling. Um, but for the most part, I feel like people kind of go into marriage mm -hmm. with no real preparation for mm -hmm. it. Um, yes. And I know even myself, mm -hmm. you know, we we did premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we did our best to prepare for marriage. But the more that I'm learning kingdom concepts, I'm realizing like, wow, even my initial motives, I went into it because I wanted, you know, a best friend mm -hmm. and because I wanted, um, you know, someone that I could have good relationship with. But it was from a selfish perspective. Um, that's really not why the father designed marriage. I mean, yeah, it's great that I get to do this with my best friend and, you know, all of those qualities are there. Mm -hmm. But that's not why marriage is created. And so when you talk about love, how a lot of people are looking to marriage for love and for that, you know, that gushy feeling and and, all, and, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It depends on feelings mm -hmm. and feelings are transient. Feelings are temporary. Mm -hmm. um, but marriage, the covenant, Elohim is permanent. And so we have to learn mm -hmm those principles that are never changing in order to have a lasting marriage. So when we look at this stat, um, in the United States, about 50% of married couples divorce, which is the sixth highest divorce rate in the world. So this Western concept of marriage ain't working. Right. It's just, yeah, it's just not. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that because there's so many times when, when you get married, uh, you have this idea. You have this idea of what it is, and that idea was formulated because you agree with a, a with a precept. And most of our precepts come from media. Uh, the media has been the medium between uh, families and individuals. And so when you see that, and you see people on TV, and you see these Hollywood uh, marriages, and you see all of these things, you formulate this unknowingly and knowingly. You formulate this into your belief system. And it's funny that you said about licensing because we weren't taught 
So you have to make sure if you call yourself an ambassador, the father says that there's nothing new under the sun. So every idea, the idea of marriage, the intent, the purpose of marriage, I would rather get it from the source, the person that created it versus someone that's um, the creation uh, mm -hmm. versus the creator. So we have to make sure that we 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 formulate those ideas based on what the word is said and how the father has established it in the beginning. So, right. And yeah. One thing I wanted to just interject about that, because in 2022, we have redefinition of quote unquote marriage and right. you have, you know, you have gay marriage and soon you may be able to marry your pet dog or donkey who, mm -hmm. who knows. Right. But again, it's like, you cannot redefine what the father has mm -hmm. established. And my thing is like, if you really understood what marriage was, you wouldn't even want to mm. partake in that because having a full understanding yes. of what it is and what it requires, then that doesn't even, it doesn't count. And when you enter into a mm -hmm. covenant, right. you know, with Elohim, there are some requirements yeah. and there are some statues um, yes. And you cannot combine lawlessness yes. with the law. And so... Um, and expect it to work. And expect it to work, right. It work. And expect it to work, yeah. It, was, it wasn't designed... The, the way the Father designed it, we should stick to that. And when we talk about redefining families, we don't have to redefine. The Father is perfect. Yes. Everything that He does has... He, he, he designs with the end as the beginning. So he knows thoroughly what he designed yes. and what he designed it to do. And so mm -hmm. as we go into marriages, a lot of people are saying, I do to things that they don't know how to do. Right. And, and it's important for us as ambassadors to make sure, again, that we understand what the roles are, how things are functioning. Because in today's society, a lot of people will say that it's outdated. They will say, initially mm -hmm. saying what the father established in the beginning is outdated. Wow. It has to be redefined. It has to be recalibrated, uh, and that's not the father's intent. What he created was perfect. Marriage, yes. the covenant that he created is perfect. Yes. It's the two individuals that come together, and it's not because they love each other, but and our love is you know part of it, and we'll get into that, what that actually means because, again, it's been defined by uh, <laughs> the Movies world. Movies and TV and right. Uh, etc. Um, if you go to the, the PowerPoint, we actually have some examples of what uh, slide number three. What a lot of people look at when you think of about marriage or mm -hmm. a lot of marriages that we often hear about. Um, and I'm not patterning my marriage after <laughs> after these people, but it's so sometimes it can be so subtle. The ideas mm -hmm. that um, are put out there by individuals like this, um, you know, thinking about infidelity, um, mm -hmm. you know, sexual immorality, yes. um, having double visions to, uh, to I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself, okay. but as I'm looking at these pictures, I'm thinking about a lot of different things that, you know, on the outside, people may look and say, wow, they're successful. They're, mm -hmm. you know, they got a lot of money. They, they they look happy. Um, but, on the underneath it is darkness right and so we never want to pattern ourselves yeah. after that right and again the enemy gets you to do a good thing so what you're seeing may look good and some of the things that they even may do may seem good in the eyes of man but is it good in the eyes of the father and so when we see these pictures of these individuals this is not the picture of marriage uh, and this is not what we have to pattern ourselves after Whatever you are influenced by, you will be a pattern of it. So we can't base our philosophy, the way that we live, and go into something that you spend a lifetime doing mm. off of someone else's ideas. Right. So let, let's look at um, the Holly, Hollywood marriage versus a kingdom covenant <laughs> marriage. Some of the... Uh, stark differences yeah. between those. Well, we'll start with the wrong way <laughs> to look at marriage, and then we'll get the covenant, uh, the kingdom perception of what marriage is. So you can read those. Okay, sure. So in a Hollywood marriage, we often see the promotion of a double vision. What do we mean by that? That power couple, um, you know, that mm -hmm. that success, that, you know, the, the man they have, 
their vision and what they're doing. And the woman, she has her own vision. You know, you don't have to give up who you are right. for uh, your family and for the kids. Like, it's very much a right. uh, dual yeah. agenda. Do both. Do it all. Both of you, you know, have right. that status. Um, versus in the Kingdom Coven Covenant marriage, there's one vision. Um, and then... And it's I, outdated. Oh, that's outdated. <laughs> and that's what they're saying. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm outdated then, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then also in a Hollywood marriage, you may have two leaders. It's like a, it's a joint effort. We, mm. you know, we collaborate together. We don't have those, you know, outdated roles. You mm. know, we can, we can both do this. We can both do that. Right. So those are some of the things that you may hear. Yeah, let me add to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Those, the, the two senior leaders. Uh, what, what is important to understand is when the father created us, he created two leaders because woman came from man. So to come from that source, you're leaders. But to understand how to submit to leadership and how the father looks at marriage. So when we see two senior leaders, meaning it's two, two uh, senior leaders making decisions. So what we mean by that is the male's making a decision, the female's making a decision. They just kind of go either way. And then that's where that double vision creeps in uh, at. And you have two people trying to do two separate careers, two different lifestyles. Some people will add an extra partner. Uh, to their marriage and live a whole nother life and they those two people have come into an agreement with that but they are defiling something that the father established so when we talk about those two senior leaders we're going to go into detail of what that looks like but I want to make sure I add that yeah again. and I think even to add to what you're saying the father he created man and woman equal mm -hmm. we're both we're equal in the sense that mm -hmm. you know you don't have uh you're not better than me right. and i'm not better than you but you're the senior mm -hmm. leader he created us with unique and distinct yes. capabilities and characteristics and so again you know <laughs> i think about like so the uh, Demetrius serves in the um armed forces and i know that you know one of the things he always complains about is women who are um basically like in that with that gi jane like i can do just like uh you know just like he can do it and that sort of thing but then when it comes to the pt test where <laughs> they have to you know do certain uh physical exercises or whatever it's like well no you know let the men have the harder stuff and then we well it's like no i thought you were i thought i thought y'all were tip for tat so again what we're getting at here is that um although we are equal we are different and the man the father gave the vision to man he didn't give it to woman the woman receives it from man and multiplies it and does things with it right. but if we don't really understand what that looks like yes. and, and how we should apply it then we could easily fall into the same trap as Hobbit did in the beginning which right. we're going to look at soon yeah we're definitely going to get to that so we'll yep. continue this so then the next one is financial stability being the main goal. I got to get this bag. I have to get this money. <laughs> like that is really the main, I, I feel like a lot of people, when they think about marriage and mm -hmm. a successful marriage, they want the white picket fence. You know, you need the house. Of course, you want to have mm -hmm. children. You want to be stable. And there's so much more yes. to it. The father is after a nation. Yes. And we, and we focus so much on uh, side effects, I would say. Um, when we talk about financial, a lot of people just get married just to be financially, quote unquote, stable. Mm. Um, and that's their that was their root of getting married. And so when that is uprooted, because trials and tribulations will come uh, and, and in that area it may come in even harder. Uh, <laughs> and so if you base your covenant, your covenant marriage on that and not on what the father designed us to do, which was learn and apply kingdom principles and laws to make the uh, covenant marriage continue to flourish. And so if we focus in on just the financial of it, when that bird leaves, then that spouse leaves. Yeah. So what is it? The same way you get them is the way you got to keep them. Right. <laughs> so that's definitely yeah. <laughs> applicative here. So let's get that. Here. Okay. Um, but as kingdom ambassadors, our main goal is to cultivate the earth. Yes. And then another um, 
another thing about Hollywood marriage is that it's a focus on love mm-hmm. and, you know, feeling feeling good, getting along. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll share this really, really quick. Um, one thing that I... <laughs> I was, we were in a marriage teaching actually, <laughs> and I'll never forget it because um, Dr. Larry, our dad, he was, I mean, going in. He was like, the father, he didn't create marriage, but no, y'all just thinking about weddings and <laughs> bachelorette parties. All of that is evil. All of that is darkness. Um, and he was basically just talking about, you know, how like it, it, he, it's nothing about love and, and the way that we have adapted um, the way that we think about it, but knowledge is the key. Like sometimes we can be so selfish yeah. even in thinking that marriage is for us. It's about what I can get, what right. I can do, how I want to feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that should never be the focus. It's a yeah. interdependence. It's a focus right. on, you know, the union, what we can give and what we can do, um, for the kingdom. Right. And that's the most important thing. So we're going to go right into this kingdom design of marriage, that's the slide number five. And uh, what we have to understand is uh, self-discovery is key. And and what we'll talk about really briefly is about that man's role. And we see in today's society, they don't want men in in those roles. Mm. And especially, and I'm speaking for my community, in the black community, black fathers, they're trying to make us distinct, uh, extinct, and take us and uproot us from what we were designed to do, be sources in our family. And so we have to understand who we are, who created us, and the authority that he give that he gave us is still present. It didn't leave. And so as we talk about self-discovery is key, it's important to know who you are because as a father, husband, um, you have to know how to lead your family. And most women today will say that uh, a lot of men don't know how to lead or they don't take the role or, you know, I just do it myself. Mm-hmm. And and one of those reasons is because self-discovery wasn't present in the in the community. It was uprooted and they replaced it with um replacement theology, they replaced it with food, uh, stamps. food stamps, they replaced it with uh government the media, stamps. government su- uh sources and things like that. And so of course the minds of those men were tainted. But as we come into the knowledge of the truth as we come into the knowledge of truth as ambassadors, as men, we have to understand who we are in order to lead our family. And yeah. when we get in our position, because we are the pattern. So if, mm-hmm. if as the pattern, if we are tainted, the fish th- stinks from the head down, basically. Mm-hmm. So if you are not in position, then you set a pattern for your family to pattern after. And so yeah. that's, that's one big thing we have to make sure we understand. Yeah. Um, before before you go to the next one, I wanted to clarify something of what we were um, just talking about because mm-hmm. I'm thinking people are probably like food stamp. What do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. And so just to give you a little bit of history, in the '60s and '70s, uh, black families in particular, 70% still had two parents in the home, whereas yeah. now you have 70% of families there's only they uh, mainly live in a one parent home and the father is usually absent. So we are really in right. a crisis. Um, whereas we don't have that father who is in position. And then even in uh, households where there are two, two people, that doesn't necessarily mean that the father is in position and right. in his role because that is so looked down upon mm-hmm. um, in today's society. But anyway, so mm-hmm. another uh, fact of history is that, um, when you are in need of government assistance, mm-hmm. you can't have a a, a, fa- a a father in the home a lot right. of times. You won't qualify for it. Yeah. And so a lot of things have been done um, strategically mm-hmm. to remove and to weaken that right. position of the father and to get him out of position. Um, so yeah. it's, it's just interesting how like that wealth and, you know, it all comes back to the dollar bill in some mm-hmm. way, yes. but overall the father's position has just been extremely weakened. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's definitely, that's definitely true. And so the other thing that we want to look at is, uh, in a kingdom design, the, the way that it was designed is one family vision. Yes. And that totally goes against what we see in today's society. Uh, right now we're really in a feministic movement where uh, women are trying to take those roles and take that position. 
and it wasn't that wasn't the original design. And so again, by you doing that, you are saying to the father, what you created was imperfect or what you created has flaws and it has to be redesigned. Uh, and so, and when we talk about one family vision, we're going to go into a uh, bearish sheet where we see where the vision was given. Cause we always have to, as ambassadors, go back to the source, go to the, the pure source and get the original design of it and, and the intent and purpose of why the father created it to understand it in and out. And this is not something that you just learn in one sitting. Um, the father tells us to study to show ourselves approved. So if we want to go into a marriage covenant, we need to know the ins and outs of how it should be operated. Yes. So in order to do that, we got to go back to the manual to understand the creation. You have to go to the creator and get the intent and purpose of it. And then also we have man possesses the family vision and is the senior leader. I tell my wife this all the time. I say, we're both leaders. But at the end of the day, I have to be that senior leader because that's the way it was designed in the beginning. And that doesn't mean that I just dominate her or whatever I say goes, because, again, it's two leaders. We lead in this family. Um, but it's a senior leader making sure that things stay aligned with what the word is saying. And I, yeah, I get where you're coming from. I don't lead the family, though. I am. And I, what, he, what you're really saying is like, we both have leadership mm. qualities, but you are the leader right. and I submit my. <laughs> and so, again, I'm reminded of before we got married, you know, I was um, in school. I, you know, I, I had I have done a lot of things that the world would consider, you know, a success. Um, you know, went and got my my master's degree, you know, all of the things um, I had started several businesses like I was I was really doing it. And when I got married, immediately, um, my whole, like, paradigm shifted. Mm -hmm. And whereas before, you know, I was getting ready to pursue a certain mm -hmm. uh, field, well, then I had my first son, and I we decided yeah. that I was a better uh, fit in the home and assisting with the business that we started together. Right. Um, and so, again, it's not that I couldn't work. Right. Um, but I caught the vision that the father had yeah. given to my husband and I knew that, you know, I was better, a better mm -hmm. fit helping right. and, and fulfilling that, uh, easer, which we're going to look at, um, one of the definitions of a woman, mm -hmm. that's where, what I needed to be doing and right. where I needed to be. So I've submitted to the vision that you have for right. our family and, it has been the best decision I could have ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and as, as she's submitting to that leadership, I'm submitting to the Father's leadership. And so it's important for when you talk about self-discovery and that vision, the only way you can get your vision and purpose is to go back to the Holy Spirit who is in the earth teaching us because the Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit has searched the innermost parts of the Father. And it says, even the thoughts concerning us. And so, and it also tells us that no man knows the thoughts of the father except the spirit that lives within him. And so when we talk about self-discovery and, and getting that vision and purpose, because a lot of men, I, I had to go through the same process. You're so eager to, to find out who you are and what you're here to do that the answer is there once we settle down and, and get into learning the kingdom. And so, so many of young men now that want to leave their families and want to do that, they're seeking help, but we're here to help you as uh, overcomers of that. Meaning when you go to the Holy Spirit, when you become a citizen of the kingdom, you go into the, uh, to the Holy Spirit and you ask him to search me inside of me and teach me and show me how to lead, how to be what uh, I was supposed to be and what I'm here to do. Then the Holy Spirit, you give the Holy Spirit access to do that. And I can tell you, you know, from experience that it was the best thing that happened to me. Yeah. I, it's easier for me to lead my family now because I know that I can always lean on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me when I don't know anything. I have to, I have to <laughs> get confidence out of the flesh because we don't know mm -hmm. anything. But the Spirit knows everything yes. because it's connected to the Father. So in order to get my vision, in order to get my purpose, I'm consistently making sure I have, I'm in position to hear the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when, and it works perfectly when she submits to that leadership and I'm submitted to the Holy Spirit. That's the design 
and how the Father created it. And we go, we're yeah. going to go right into that in just a second. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. And it, it just reminds me of the two major things that we have to have as kingdom ambassadors, mm -hmm. and that's being obedient mm -hmm. and being submissive. And without yeah. those two things, it just won't work. So I'm glad that you mm -hmm. said that, that, you know, really you being... Um, being uh, sensitive to the voice right. of your spirit and submitting your will, what mm -hmm. you want to do with, you know, your plans. Because I remember at one time, Demetrius, boy, he times. would work probably 90, however how many hours in a week, <laughs> he would work double that. Like he would just work, 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 work because he wanted to provide for his mm -hmm. family. And that's yes. another thing that, you know, a misconception I feel like right. that society has said as a father, as a man, mm -hmm. your main thing is to provide for your family. But according mm -hmm. to the kingdom, the father is our provider. Right. We are just the manager. Yep. You have to get so, out of that, mm -hmm. that ownership. When we talk about interdependence, mm -hmm. if we get out of that, it's confidence in the flesh when we finish talking about it. When you put confidence in the flesh, I'm going to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this, I'm going to provide on this. Initially, you're saying to the Father, you know, I'm not going to do it the way you designed it. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it, and now I'm responsible for myself. So you have to go from that ownership mentality to that interdependence and managing. Mm -hmm. So now I understand I'm just managing the resource the Father gives me. I'm managing my time. I'm managing my family. Uh, the things that, that have been given to me, I'm managing them. I don't own them. Mm -hmm. So I return it back to the Father so that I can make sure that I keep my mindset and my position correct. Yeah, and I would say, you know, that ownership, that another thing that I feel like a lot of women fall into the trap mm -hmm. when it comes to that is children. Mm -hmm. And feeling like, you know, we have the final say, you know, because a lot of times mm -hmm. women are the primary caregivers for their children, but they don't belong to me. And that was one thing yeah. that I had to make sure that I was being submissive to my husband, even in that area. And I always said, you know, even before we had children, like I never want to make him feel like he doesn't have a say or I don't validate his role as a father, even though I may know more about changing diapers and, you know, feeding the child, but I never mm -hmm. wanted to come off as um, even a senior leader in that area. And I think we have to be careful about that too, because right. it is our responsibility to teach and to train mm -hmm. um, our children. But again, they belong, you know, children are a blessing from Yahaba. Mm -hmm. And so we, women have to be careful in that area and not to stifle mm -hmm. the role of the father um, yes. in that same regard. Well, it looks like yeah. the next point, you're touching up on the next point there. Oh, okay. Women, <laughs> <laughs> the woman is to receive the seed, the vision, and multiply and bring it forth. Yes, absolutely. Um, I know that that's something that, again, relates to kind of what we've <laughs> yeah. been dealing with. So I don't want to, like... <laughs> I don't want to um, get ahead of myself or, or overdo it. So, Yeah, and, yeah, and it's also good to we see at these last two points. There's two heads two, with two visions. When you have two visions, it's di division because mm -hmm. it's not the original intent and purpose. And what women have to understand, because I, I, I can hear it now, a lot of people say, well, you know, I have purpose. I, I can do these things. I can do a lot of things. Alicia, one of those individuals that can, whatever she puts her mind to, she's going to multiply it. She's gonna, um, she's gonna make it flourish, and for her to submit all of that to the vision that the Father gave me, and that's one other thing that we have to understand as as uh, father husbands is we cast vision, and when we cast a vision to our wives, when we see this point, they receive the seed, they receive the vision. And they multiply. She reminds me of that vision. Yeah, a repeater. I'm a repeater of the vision that yes. has been deposited in him. And and it's really about even building him up, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that, you know, because like Demetrius was saying earlier, like there's so much in him mm -hmm. and so many giftings in him. And so, and a lot of times we always talk about how like he sees the end from the beginning, mm -hmm. even when we're talking about our business, he's, you know, when he's casting vision mm -hmm. and talking about goals and things, and I'm like, okay, I got it. Now you're talking mm -hmm. about A to Z. Let's go to B. Right. What is what is step B? What is C? You know, and and really kind of helping him uh, work the plan mm -hmm. in order to get yeah. to Z. Um, but without having him, 
I'm only focused on the day to day, the A to B, the A to B, mm-hmm. and I'll never grow. So we need yeah. each other. Yeah. So that's why it's so important for us to uh, to work together and even not, you know, all the giftings and stuff that he has and that I have. Right. That is in me for him. Yeah. So, you know, whatever husband that, you know, the father gives you or whatever wife the father gives you, you have to understand that what's in you, the other person needs and mm-hmm. vice versa. Yes. And if you are taking what you have and only pouring into uh, your wants and dreams right. and not in what the family has, then the family is suffering. And that time, mm-hmm. you know, because th- that was one thing that I learned even in the business we're in now. I have the gift of, um, I like to do interior design and we have a renovation mm-hmm. business, right? Mm-hmm. But, and so I started doing design services. And then I realized, wow, this is actually taking time away from Mm -hmm. me helping in the administration side of the business. So it was like I created a business in a business. (laughs) So basically, to to sum it up, I had to realize, like, even though this is in the area, I have to make sure that the majority of my time is being spent in the correct area and to not allow things to, you know, to get me off track. Yeah, that's awesome. So we, we're not going to keep you guys longer on that. We got to go to Barry's Sheet so we can yes. get, the, get the design and really get the uh, intent and purpose of why the Father created marriage, that covenant that he yes. created. So let's go right to that. That's in Barry's Sheet 1, 26. Yeah, and while he's, uh, while we're getting that up, you know, we've already, Demetrius, you did a really great job of kind of painting that picture. Um, And we have a diagram here, too, of the kingdom covenant position, Mm -hmm. how Yeshua, or I'll let you kind of deal with that as we go into bare sheets because they all connect together. Yeah, so it's definitely important for us when we talk about position because we can say position, position, and a lot of people are like, okay, what does that look like? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, again, we go to bare sheet. It's where the beginning when the father established that covenant in the earth. We saw it in play. We saw who was created first. We saw what he was supposed to do. We, well, we're getting ready to see it, yeah. and <laughs> and then from that you'll see how things are supposed to to be. And we're also going to see how when things get out of order, the enemy is present. And how that can be detrimental to the uh, to your covenant. So yeah. uh, we see here, we see Yeshua the Messiah, and we see this covenant in our positions. And the we I know we saw this before, where you see the umbrella, and you see Yeshua, then you see the man, then you see the another umbrella, and it's the, the the wife and the family. And it's kind of similar to that uh, in the, in the sense of my focus is solely on doing the will of the Father. And my focus is getting uh, even more understanding of my vision, even more understanding of my purpose by spending that relationship with the Holy Spirit who Yeshua gave us when he came in the earth. And then um, as a father, husband, I take on that role as a senior leader and my wife is submitting to that leadership. So it's kind of similar to what we already talked about. Yeah. Um, but we're going to go to bear sheet and really get get dig into that. All right, so we'll go to bear sheet one and twenty six. We'll pull it up on Logos, um, so you guys can see it. All right, do I control this, Israel? Or? Okay, gotcha. So we'll start with uh, bear sheet uh, that's two, and we'll start at verse twenty six. So it says, "And Elohim said, Let us make humankind in our image and according to our likeness." And let them rule over the fish, over the sea. And you see here, it says, let them. uh, And over the birds of the heaven and over the cattle and and over all the earth and over every moving thing that moves upon the earth. And what I want to add here is he never said rule over uh, or dominate people. And we have so many people that uh, when we take on that role as a father husband, most people think that the idea of it is very... Uh, domineering and just you know like you just this beast or something like it's it just doesn't that's not the design uh so we, i want to make sure i add that so elohim created humankind in his image in his likeness of elohim he created them male and female uh he created them and elohim blessed them and elohim said to them be fruitful multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heaven and every 
animal that moves upon the earth. So we see here when the father created them, he gave them um, a mandate and he told them to be fruitful and multiply. The main emphasis on this was that he wanted a place that was conducive enough to heaven coming into the earth. And so when he says to multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, he means to subject it to the word. Because if we dissect this and we go into the uh, manuscript, we'll see all of Tav there, meaning the word is present. So when we subdue it, we subject that to the word. So it's important for us when we together as ambassadors, we're still cultivating the earth. That's not that's still the mandate of, of man and woman, the family. We're still cultivating the earth, making sure that it's conducive to heaven and so we uh we'll go down it's the other scripture 216 all right and so that. sure um and so moving on so before we were just talking about the mandate and so now skipping down to uh 2 and 16 it reads and Yah yahweh elohim commanded the man saying from every tree of the garden you may freely eat but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat from it, you shall surely die. And so right here, we see this is the father giving instructions to Adam, uh, which is very significant because later mm -hmm. on, we'll see when the woman, okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he gave, he gave the instructions to Adam, to the man. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll just, we'll pick back up there. And then, Verse 18, it says, then Yahweh Elohim said, it is not good that the man be alone. I will make for him a helper as his counterpart. And so actually, um, that doesn't fully convey what the father was trying to, uh, yeah, what slide is that? Israel, if you can pull up. Uh, yeah, let's dissect that. We want to make sure you get the pure source of and what it actually meant. And that's why we want to introduce 11. this, why he's getting that the importance of going back to the Hebrew and getting the original pure form of what was being translated or transliterated. Some things were added in, taken away. Yeah. So we want to make sure we get that. And uh, Alicia will definitely dissect that part. Yeah. Um, and so right there where it says, Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. What it's really trying to convey is that there was no matzah, ezer, nigaz. So if you see those three arrows, those are the three uh, words that uh, we're referring to. And later on, we're going to really, I, oh man, the, the word is so powerful. So I'm excited if we have time to get to what those mean. But if not, there's been some great teaching um, mm -hmm on what Mata Izunigat means, which is the uh, design and the purpose in the name of woman. All right, yes. but going back to uh, Logos, Israel, um, we were at 18. Then Yahweh Elohim said, it is not good that man is alone. I will make for him a helper as his counterpart. And so of course that's when um, Elohim yes. created Hava, right? And so, Skipping down to 23, Adam says, she is now bone for my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman or Isha, for she was taken from man. Uh, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife and they shall be as one flesh. And the man and his wife, both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. Yes. I want to add something there when it talks about, um, you see this design here where it says that, um, a man should leave his father and mother. And it didn't say the woman should leave his father and mother because I'm going to tell you why. So Adam was a father husband. And we see from the beginning that when he was placed in the earth, he was here to solve a problem. There was something going on that needed to be solved. So he put man there and he gave him a vision and purpose. That was Adam's vision and purpose was to, to uh, name the animals and do the things that he did. And so then we see that woman was added in. And so when we understand the role of a father husband, when a woman leaves their family, she's supposed to be given to another father husband with vision. Yes. And that's not ha that's not on the other side. It's it's the father husband training another father husband. So you so I'll give an example. So we have a son, and we have a daughter. And so one of my roles for my son is to impart wisdom and knowledge on how to be an effective father husband that leads his family. 
And so it's a, a huge role to take on. It's a re- big responsibility because the father sees that. And yeah. he sees uh, the father-husband as a source mm-hmm. um, because we see that woman came from man. Yeah, we definitely, we can go there now. Um, that's slide eight where it talks about the kingdom design of man. We are running out of time. Yeah, we don't have to rush. We yeah, but no time. rushing. You're right. Yeah, so then uh, we see, and this is 215. So then Yahweh Elohim took man and put him in the garden of Eden and to tend to keep this as the vision and purpose that created him. Mm-hmm. Now, again, ambassadors, it's two. Uh, we have our vision and purpose, what you're here to, the problem you're supposed to solve, and then you also are still uh, cultivating earth with knowledge of the kingdom. Um, and, yes. And then we see here vi- uh, vision or understanding, power inside, access to the kingdom of Elohim. So uh, that was that word that we see there. Yeah. And so if we look at, you can skip down to um, slide 10. The father, he has designed us so in- intricately. And with remember, we were talking about those different roles and responsibilities. Mm. So um, I'll just read this. Fathers are the strong leaders of the house. They're the source, the nourisher, sustainer, provider, upholder, developer, leader and head protector. So those are some of the qualities um, of a man. And I, <laughs> I'm i going to let you kind of deal with that if you want to um, as a man, because I cannot necessarily, yes. <laughs> I don't live that part. Yeah. So we see here uh, when we talk about the stink roles, we see and what the things that she just named. But we see that, honestly, you are a male by birth. So the father knows from the womb, he said he ought to have the plans for us. He already knew who we were. Uh, before we even entered into the earth. And so you're a male by birth, but a man man and a father by choice. You have to accept the thought of how the father designed you. And again, that will, it comes out of our soul, the choices that we make. Uh, And so as a a father-husband, we have to walk into that. We have to accept that role because the father is needing more ambassadors uh, father husbands ambassadors that will speak boldly the word that are going to lead their family and this is the type of thing in society now when you speak boldly the word as a male it's perceived wrong it's perceived as harsh it's, re- it's received or perceived as um, just out of it just out of the norm for a lot of people because the idea of a father husband has been redefined by the music industry and by the media, and so uh, it's 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 detrimental to families. We need more men that are going to stand up. We need more men that are going to do the word and do it boldly. Yes. And by way of of, of us doing that, our families will get in line. We have to set the pattern. Mm-hmm. We have to be the pattern. But yes. in order to get the pattern, we got to go to the manufacturer. So right. it's important for us because we don't have much more time now, but it's important for us as ambassadors to make sure, especially the fathers, I'm, I'm just getting the urge to just talk to the fathers um, about just really getting in position because mm-hmm. these, uh, the women need us to operate in our roles so that they can operate in their roles and yes. the family and the, and the anointing that the father placed inside of the family can continue to flourish. Um, yes. He wants to bless the family. Marriage is perfect in the eyes of the father so as we talk about um kingdom covenant we have to make sure that we do it the way the father designed it to do stop stop letting the media and all these other people and social media define the the covenant that the father established you have to go back to the manufacturer you have to in order to make sure that it works the way the father designed. Yes, that's that's good. And I would also say to the women that the man can't lead if we're stepping in that role. Mm. Because th- today's woman, you know, earlier you were talking about how a lot of times men um, who are in their right role can be portrayed as, you know, that's harsh and that's mm. domineering. But we need to talk about the domineering woman mm. because in 2022 uh, and, you know, just, you know, today, Women can be so controlling. And I'm reminded of the scripture um, in Bear Sheet um, where it talks about 
how your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. That desire that it's mm -hmm. talking about is that desire to lead and mm -hmm. to control and to compete with mm -hmm. our husband rather than compliment. And so what that looks like is us making sure that we do die daily to our flesh, that we do um, submit like isn't I think about the statement that people talk about who wears the pants and, and usually people laugh because they're like, oh, well, we know, you know, the woman's really running the show like that's not how it should be. Mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure that we are not in right. competition and yeah. not controlling, but making sure that we submit that power and um, and, and remain in order. So yeah. The thing that. about women are they're the strong spirited ones. Yeah. So they have that influence. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to, it takes even more restraint and posture and poise, uh, Ness, if I can make that word up, I hope and that's poise. the word. <laughs> and being poised uh, and that to um, submit that to that senior leader. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of, um, it, it really, it's really about character. So and it's about what influences you. So if you influence by the word, it's easier to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you're influenced by uh, love and hip hop and uh, all these other crazy shows uh, <laughs> where these women, I, I, I try not to watch it because I get upset, but women throwing drinks on men and slapping men and, and calling them bees talking and all type, kind of way. talking down on them. That's that's not the order of how the father designed. It. And it's, it's that, just get rid of it. <laughs> right. Just get rid of it because it's it's going to cause you to digest that and it's going to by way be your uh, philosophy the way you live because you accepted that thought. So that's that's not the design of the family. Yeah. And so we we are out, are out of time. We we would love to talk more about this and we get so passionate about it because we live it every yeah. single day. Yeah. And we have to uh we we are firm believers that knowledge is the answer. It's not just love. It's and love again is a a job or a, a hob, I'm sorry. And it's revealing the heart of the father. So it's different from the love that you see on TV. Revealing the heart of the father means that I'm treating my wife um, as I would treat the father as far as uh, being uh, in position by doing what I'm supposed to do, by listening to the Holy Spirit. And by way of me doing that, I'm honoring the father because, mm -hmm. again, he created a covenant marriage. So if this is you, we just want to uh, have you connect. We have a powerful ministry here that has taught us how to operate as kingdom citizens in a kingdom covenant marriage. And so we would love for you to uh, join in and listen to that. We have plenty of teaching on family, uh, mishpakyao, which is the Hebrew word for family. And we would love for you to be able to join and uh, listen to those things. So with that being said, we would like to say shalom to you and like and subscribe to the channel and share this video. Shalom. Shalom.